Hi guys, I'm Smitha and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things machine learning and AI related. In today's video, I want to talk about how you guys can go about learning Python specifically for machine learning and data science. This is going to be extremely useful if you're a beginner who's getting into machine learning and data science and you're really unsure about how to start off with Python. As you guys know, Python is a really broad language with tons of different libraries for various different functions. So understanding which libraries to actually learn and which libraries to actually pick up uh, for specifically for machine learning and data science is extremely important. Since this is an absolute beginner's guide to Python for machine learning, I will not be talking about the machine learning libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch, but instead I'm going to be specifically focusing on Python libraries such as NumPy and Pandas, which are the two main libraries that anyone who is getting into machine learning and data science definitely needs to know how to use. So NumPy is one of the most basic, but also an extremely important library within Python. In fact, it's actually considered a sort of building block library, simply because a lot of other libraries, such as TensorFlow, are actually built on top of NumPy. So as you guys can see, NumPy actually forms the basis of powerful machine learning libraries like scikit-learn and scipy. As machine learning grows, so does the list of libraries built on NumPy. For example, as I was saying, TensorFlow and also PyTorch actually makes use of NumPy and a lot of the functionality in these libraries make use of NumPy. So why exactly is NumPy so important? Well, the most important thing about NumPy is NumPy arrays. So what exactly are NumPy arrays? Well, NumPy arrays are a type of data type. And the amazing thing about NumPy arrays is that they can be multidimensional and NumPy arrays are used for almost anything which requires values to be stored. Whether it's a machine learning model and you are storing the outputs and the inputs, you're probably making use of NumPy arrays. So how can you go about learning NumPy? Well, there's tons of courses out there, but the amazing thing is that on the actual NumPy website, there are some basic tutorials to start out with. And these tutorials are actually pretty decent for beginners. So I would highly recommend them. I'm going to be talking about five different resources that you guys can use in order to learn NumPy. So the first one is going to be the NumPy website itself, the NumPy documentation website, and it actually has an entire uh, series of articles related to learning NumPy for absolute beginners. So through this, you guys get a basic understanding of you know, how to install NumPy, how to import it, and there is some sample code with some of the basic functionalities that you guys can actually try out and practice as well. So such as adding, removing, and sorting elements, etc. The next resource for learning NumPy is actually on a website called Machine Learning Plus. So this particular article is called Python NumPy Introduction to ND Array. So ND Array essentially refers to multidimensional arrays, and this is very specific to machine learning. So I would highly recommend that you guys read this article as well. And it includes a bunch of different code snippets for you to actually practice as well. The next amazing resource for learning NumPy is actually by Better Programming and it's called NumPy Illustrated, the visual guide to NumPy. So if you are a visual learner, this is going to be extremely useful for you. So you start off with understanding what exactly is an n-dimensional array in NumPy and you also get to look at different dimensions. So for example, one dimensional, we're talking about vectors and then two dimensional matrices and also three dimensional and above. So, and since NumPy arrays and Python lists are often confused, this article actually breaks down the differences between both of them. I would highly recommend uh, going through this article and getting a really good understanding of what exactly are NumPy arrays. And I think this article goes along well with the other resources and the other tutorials that I've mentioned. The next NumPy tutorial is arguably the one of the most interesting one because it's based on a game. It's created by Nicholas and it is and you guys can find it on GitHub, and it's based on the Game of Life. If you're not sure what the Game of Life is, the Game of Life was actually created by a British mathematician called John Horton Conway in 1970, and this game is based around cellular automation. 
So by playing this game, you guys are going to understand how to create multidimensional NumPy arrays as well as how to manipulate them. Not only is this tutorial going to be fun, but it's also going to be extremely interesting and knowledgeable as well. Now the last tutorial for NumPy is actually part of a Stanford course called Convolutional Neural Networks for Visual Recognition. This tutorial is extremely well detailed and it has almost everything that you would need to know if you are a beginner and when we're talking about the basics of NumPy, this tutorial definitely has all of that covered because it also introduces you to some SciPy functions as well as some math matplotlib functions as well, which are also extremely useful libraries for machine learning and data science. So guys, these are five amazing tutorials for absolute beginners when we are talking about NumPy. Next up is the pandas library. And similar to how NumPy is known for multidimensional arrays, Pandas is known for something called a data frame. So what exactly is a data frame? A data frame is an object used to store tabular data in order to make data manipulation and indexing much more easier. So a lot of times we have our data in SQL databases or in Excel format or in CSV format, and that is not exactly easy to work with or manipulate, especially when you're trying to pass this data into machine learning models. So what you can do is make use of pandas data frame and essentially convert your data into a pandas data frame. And this makes it much more easier to work with. So with pandas data frame, you can read and write data much more faster. You can reshape your data. You can do indexing, subsetting, you can change the size and you can do merging and joining of different data sets and much, much more. Let's look at some amazing resources that you guys can actually learn how to make use of the pandas library from. Within the pandas documentation, there is this really good article. It's called 10 minutes to pandas and it's essentially a short introduction to pandas. Uh, it's especially great if you are a new beginner and it has all the basic methods that you as a beginner should know, such as object creation, such as how to view data and how to select and get data. These type of things are all covered in this 10 minute guide to pandas. Beyond that, I would also suggest another article called Intro to Data Structures, and that is also extremely useful as well. Another article is called A Cookbook. Once you've actually picked up pandas, you can actually look back on this cookbook in order to get short snippets of code that you can just easily pick out. Another great tutorial for pandas is by Jay Alamar and it's called A Gentle Visual Intro to Data Analysis in Python Using Pandas. This is a very short and simple introduction to pandas because it gets right to the point and definitely covers all the basics such as loading data from a CSV file and converting that into a data frame and also visualizing your data frame and selecting different columns on your data frame based on labels, as well as selecting different rows within the data frame. He also covers how to filter your data frame, as well as how to deal with missing values. Missing values is extremely common with any real life data set that you're dealing with. So it's extremely important that you guys know exactly how to deal with missing values. And the good thing with the pandas library is that it comes with inbuilt functions to deal with these missing values. So guys, in this video, I definitely covered some amazing tutorials, especially for beginners for both NumPy and Pandas. Of course, there are so many other in-depth courses out there, but if you are a beginner, I would definitely suggest these articles and also tutorials to follow. In the future, I'm going to be making a follow-up video for intermediate level and also advanced level when it comes to uh, pandas and numpy and, and what sort of resources that you guys should be learning and following to get to those levels. I hope this video was helpful. Leave a like and comment and subscribe for more useful content like this and see you in my next video.